Well, I did get myself this shirt here. It's still a little bit large. Well, I hope you're able to see the logo. Hi, hello and welcome, Microbe Hunter here. And as the title of the video says, I'm going to put this watermelon under the microscope. Not only this one, but also one that my kids have grown on the balcony. Look at this, isn't this a nice growing watermelon? Still too, too small, of course. But um, my kids have grown them out of a watermelon seed and I wanted to put it under the microscope. Of course, that's a little bit difficult to do because how are you gonna do that? I'm gonna show you later. And also, uh, I've discovered something quite interesting, namely that the watermelon that I put under the microscope was Full, was full of bacteria. I'm not saying this is a big problem, uh, but yeah, I didn't want to eat it anymore. Well, in any case, uh, the watermelon after a few weeks already started to grow quite large. Uh, here you can see it already is starting to already form those uh, nice stripes. Um, but in any case, I did not want to destroy the plant of my children. So what I did is I looked for a few flowers and those flowers, uh, they of course contained pollen and I decided, okay, I'm gonna put those pollen first of all those pollen under the microscope um, I saw the anthers and I tried to knock out the pollen um, of the flower on the microscope slide but this was not really successful the pollen they were so sticky that they actually stayed in the flower um, I actually had to wait a few days because the flowers only appeared maybe for a day or so um, and then they again disappeared well I used my tweezers to collect some of the pollen I tapped uh, then the tweezers on the microscope slide and that's it um, I added a little bit of water um, and I put it under the microscope and I was able to see the pollen. Um, one thing that was not really successful unfortunately but maybe I'm gonna be successful in the future is to see the pollen germinate. Um, this is uh, the pollen grain if you add sugar water in some species what they will do is, is they will start to form a pollen tube and uh, this can actually be also observed under time lapse but unfortunately it didn't work here but uh, I'm working on it and uh, I think I might be successful in the future at least uh, maybe later uh, latest next springtime when there are more flowers out again. In any case, I really like to observe these pollen. You can also find them in honey. Um, so if you put a honey sample under the microscope, like I've already done before, you're also able, uh, able to see them. Some of the pollen actually started to accumulate and cluster around uh, air bubbles as well. Um, yeah, and that's basically also something that you're able to see here. But uh, by focusing through the pollen, you can also see a little bit the surface texture. So it's, I think it's, it's quite fascinating and you're able to play around here also with different lighting techniques. Uh, yeah, I tried phase contrast as well. Um, I tried the bright field. Yeah, there are limitless, and, um, uh, limitless possibilities that you can try out with your microscope. Um, in any case, uh, those pollen, um, uh, what they do is, is they're being spread from flower to flower and then when they pollinate uh, the, the stigma, um, uh, then the pollen tube will grow and then the fruit uh, will start to grow and the new watermelon will start uh, to appear. First, they were quite small and tiny, but then after a couple of weeks, they really started to grow. Now, this watermelon here is already a few days old and I took some of the soft uh pulp of the watermelon and put it directly under the microscope and this is actually where I saw a lot of bacteria. Uh, not surprisingly because the surface where you cut the watermelon is exposed uh, to air and this means that bacteria from the air are able to settle down on this cut surface and they are able to start to, to multiply and to reproduce because the watermelon is very nutritious of course. And here you can see those little small dots that you see streaming. These are most likely bacteria at least they have the right shape and also the right uh, the appearance and, and, and size and uh, this was of course cause for worry uh, because well the watermelon was already a week old and even if I kept it in the refrigerator uh, it still started to yeah, not look quite fresh anymore and this is where I saw those uh, dots those tiny dots and I think that these must be bacteria it didn't surprise me that's something that you quite uh, can find quite uh, quite frequently okay so I cut open the watermelon to take a sample from the inside the watermelon on the inside was already very significantly harder uh, and this actually shows that on the soft outside of the watermelon this is where bacteria maybe already started to break down the dish tissue of the watermelon a little bit and the bacteria did, did not reach the inside of the watermelon yet and that's why the inside was much harder and had to actually press down the cover glass on the slide uh, to make sure that it's uh, flat and of course I wanted to compare now the number of bacteria here as well I still saw those small little dots 
but they were significantly less. And I think that many of them could actually be simply fragments of the cells um, during the preparing of the slide. But I think uh, there were significantly few bacteria in there. And those that I saw probably were from my knife because I used the contaminated knife to also cut the inside of the watermelon. So you see, um, quite interesting. These spiral shaped structures that you see, that is xylem. Xylem tissue is uh, the tissue of a plant that transports the water and in many cases the xylem tissue um, contains those ring shaped structures and those ring shaped structures they actually are strengthening uh, the cells and they provide support. Well here that's uh, again a more close up of xylem um, tissue here that you see. Very common, I did not only find them in watermelons of course but also in other fruits, bananas for example, it's easy to find them as well. And uh, different plants and different uh, yeah, have a different uh, xylem shape. Sometimes they're spiral shaped, sometimes they're simply individual rings. You find all sorts of variations here, but if you ever see those structures, then you know that these are the cells that actually transport the water through a plant and at the same time also provide support and strength uh, to the cells because of the water pressure. You don't want the cells uh, to collapse. Well, I think uh, for today, this is uh, it again. Um, yeah, do consider subscribing to the channel if you like it. Happy microbe hunting as always. Uh, see you around next time and bye bye.